Για περισσότερα από 30 χρόνια, το Ινστιτούτο Βιομηχανικής Εκπαίδευσης και Κατάρτισης προσφέρει γνώσεις και δεξιότητες για πρωτοπορία. Με προγράμματα προσαρμοσμένα στις ανάγκες των συνεργατών μας, εκπαιδευόμενων και επιχειρήσεων. Προγράμματα που ενσωματώνουν την καινοτομία και εξωστρέφεια, που αναδεικνύουν δεξιότητες, συνδέουν τη γνώση με την αγορά εργασίας, προετοιμάζουν για τις εξελίξεις. Με παραρτήματα και σύγχρονες δομές που διασφαλίζουν την ποιότητα και αρτιότητα των υπηρεσιών μας σε κάθε γωνιά της χώρας μας. Διεθνείς πιστοποιήσεις και διαπιστεύσεις που επιβραβεύουν τη δράση μας και επισφραγίζουν την ποιότητά μας. Εφαρμοσμένη τεχνολογία μάθησης, υπερσύγχρονα πιστοποιημένα εργαστήρια για άμεση και μεθοδευμένη αλλαγή του τρόπου δουλειάς. Συνδέουμε τη θεωρία με την πράξη. Την πράξη με το αποτέλεσμα. ΙΒΠ. Γνώσεις και δεξιότητες για πρωτοπορία. Μέναμε καιρό τώρα και ετοιμαζόμασταν. Αμφισβητήσαμε το παλιό. Δοκιμάσαμε νέους τρόπους. Ανακαλύψαμε δυνάμεις που έχουμε μέσα μας. Αυτή είναι η στιγμή να κάνουμε το άλμα. Όχι μικρά βήματα με δισταγμό. Εκθετική και βιώσιμη ανάπτυξη. Νέες επενδύσεις και νέες θέσεις εργασίας. Για όλους. Στην Alpha Bank είμαστε έτοιμοι. Όπως και εσείς, έτοιμοι για το αύριο. important thing during the natural disaster is communication and we will keep standing behind the client to store the systems. So we have 这样是让农村的孩子啊，贫穷的孩子啊，都有条件能在网上看见这个世界，提高他们素质，他们将来为人类创造财富的能力就会增强。
Κυρίε και κύριοι, καλησπέρα σα. Είμαι η Νέλη Κάτσου, αντιπρόεδρο τη VNK Capital και πρόεδρο τη φετινή Γενική Συνέλευση Συνδέσμου Επιχειρήσεων και Βιομηχανιών. Of enterprises, it coincides with uh, the end of a series of measures. Uh, again, a pandemic ba uh, background that impacted us all. Today, we have. Ακούσαμε με πολύ ενδιαφέρον τόσο τον απολογισμό. So it was very interesting to see the activities of CER of the last year and the plans for the years to come. A plan which builds on the central idea 
of empowering enterprises in such a way to increase the benefits uh, for the Greek economy and mainly for our society. We talked about our main priorities on which we are all going to work together to be successful, emphasizing development and training our people, increasing the capacity of our economy for innovation, digital adjustment, green transition of business, and the creation of an internationally competitive industry. Building a new image, which uh, is an image of great trust, Apologies for this break. So, building a powerful relation of trust between business and society, we draft a course of long, sustainable uh, development, inclusive development does that not exclude anybody. As our president said before, it's only our joint efforts that might lead to success. So, we are going to hear more about uh, uh, these strands by Mr. Papaleksopoulos. So, we have the honor of this open event of SEV, starting uh, with uh, the message of uh, the President of the Hellenic Republic, Madam Katerina Sakelaropoulou. Then, we will have the honor of having the Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis and Mr. Albert Bura, Bula, uh, the CEO of Pfizer. They are going to have a discussion with Mr. Papalexopoulos. It has been a great honor for me to be to preside over uh, this uh, General Assembly of SEV and say a couple of words before the President of the Hellenic Republic. Welcome all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, coming out of this unprecedented health crisis that uh, impacted our country and the planet seems to be closing more and more. The discovery of the uh, vaccine, the outcome of the very good collaboration between scientists and international entrepreneurship, and the observance of the schedule of vaccinations is a landmark for full recovery. The road to uh, the, return of the return to normality is by far not an easy one. The pandemic has been trying the resilience of national economies, and many losses have been suffered in terms of uh, employment worldwide. Greece has just started to recover after 10 years of deep financial crisis when we once again were called upon to deal with situations of destabilizing effects for the society and for the economy. We nevertheless demonstrated that we were able to achieve a lot if we operate uh, in concerted cooperation and in conjunction with the international community. That is a teaching we should be taking away as we're entering dynamically now in the post COVID-19 era. On the way opened up before us, the new European financial tools are reinforcing the national arsenals towards the limitation of a gradual uh, interception of the depth and the breadth of uh, the pandemic and its impact. The international concertation against crisis reinforces the need towards uh, boosting uh, solidarity and the commitment towards improving the collective resilience vis-a-vis -vis potential uh, turbulences that might come about as a result of climatic change and uh, digital transformation. Today, more than ever, shall we have to be optimistic without forgetting that many forms of inequalities have been worsened over time. Uh, inequalities uh, amongst generations, populations, men and women, gender equalities amongst countries having been impacted in an asymmetrical way uh, by the pandemic and are now recovering at a very different pace. 
It has become evident that we are living in societies which, although economically developed and technologically advanced, nevertheless remain quite unstable and vulnerable, whereas the current mechanisms of control and interception of uh, risks are not enough to face new challenges. Unless we make sure that the transition is obtained in a fair way and by way of appropriate institutional tools, the modern post-industrial risks that are associated to potential turbulences coming up as a result of immigration, geopolitical conflicts, and the digital illiteracy are bound to lead to an explosion of inequalities a very fast and without exclusion uh, recovery is of vital importance towards building a sustainable and prosperous future. A condition sine qua non for this to be achieved is for us to enhance the feeling of our individual contribution and collective responsibility. Also determinant shall be our preparation, the preparation of the world of labor and the reinforcement of entrepreneurship at industry. In our country, the production and the manufacturing may definitely contribute to the enhancement of extrovertness and the consolidation of a model of development that harmoniously combining development and financial performance with social prosperity and environmental sustainability. The acceleration of investments in the domain of avant-garde research and the adoption of innovations will be contributing to the securing of employment, creating new jobs, and recruiting highly skilled persons uh, with all positive aspects this entails. Over the months uh, that uh, are behind us, and despite difficulties, the sector of manufacturing has uh, demonstrated an unprecedented adaptability and resilience. I tend to uh, thank uh, all entrepreneurs, the workers, and all social partners for having contributed to the struggle for a joint dealing with the constraints in our economy and in our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, in the future, businesses are called upon to invest in innovation uh, with an, a positive social impact. The new European industrial strategy brings about the importance of uh, developing new uh, innovative industrial uh, sectors that are harmonizing with uh, the latest in industry, in the society, in community ideals. And at the same time, a series of mechanisms of self-regulation as are the code of ethics and the corporate social responsibility along with legislative initiatives at the European level associated to due diligence demonstrated by companies in the matter of human rights and the protection of the environment underscore the special importance that a responsible and sustainable entrepreneurship is entailing for a smooth transition to the new era. What is more, the uh, conditions are set in place for a construction of a positive relationship between businesses and the society. Within such framework, I believe it is of major importance to see initiatives such as yours to highlight the need for the reinforcement of uh, relationship of businesses with the society as a main priority and a point of orientation for tomorrow for the generations to come. This perspective opens up a new perspective so that Greek industry not only adjusts to the new challenges ahead, but more than that becomes an accelerator and a catalyst of new forms forms of perception and action meant to establish uh, the uh, set of values for towards a more essential, substantial recovery of uh, this country to the benefit of all. I wish you the best of success to your activities and thank you very much for your hosting me.
Good evening and welcome to this year's General Assembly of SEV. This year, again, we have to meet online because of the pandemics, which is still putting the resilience of society and economy uh, at test, to test, but it also tests uh, us and our families. Instead of parallel monologues, we decided to organize a debate on the basic priorities of the Greek economy and modern business world from three different viewpoints. We have the honor and joy to host our Prime Minister, Mr. Kyriakos Mitsotakis, as well as online from New York, the President and CEO CEO of the well-known to us Pfizer, Mr. Albert Bourla, coming from Thessaloniki. So allow me to start by setting the frame of our debate before giving them the floor for a brief words of introduction. We haven't come out of the tunnel yet, and the pandemic insists in uh, placing obstacles. There is, however, increased optimism for Greece that uh, next year's might bring powerful rate of financial and social progress. In SEV, we believe in this perspective and we think that our central mission is to serve it. However, an inclusive, stable and long-term development course will not come inevitably. We have to conquer it. It's not just a matter of available resources, as we all know very well from the experience of the past. We need changes and breakthrough. If one wants to find uh, reasons to worry, okay, one might uh, refer to many figures, data and indices that indicate that despite interventions in the last painful decade, our competitiveness hasn't been actually improved in relation to our partners in the EU. And of course, they still progress. Those that hoped that the crisis could be the spark for a radical change in the production model of our country have not been justified, at least not yet. However, there are some hopeful facts that allow for a more optimistic reading. What we see around us are more and more start-ups with innovative thinking, teamwork and thirst for progress. We see established enterprises investing in green and digital future, in their human resources and in proper governance. We see world leaders, world leading companies expressing their trust in Greece. We see young people that left Greece coming back with a huge experience. Another important uh, thing is that we have a wider common understanding in our society as regards some general directions. For example, all of us more or less agree that what we have to do is not to come back uh, to the modus operandi before the crisis and the pandemic. We need to turn to investment and production. Greece belongs to the EU and uh, gets power from it. Digital revolution and climate change radically change uh, the facts and create opportunities and risks. There are needs in skills and knowledge which is not produced to the degree we need in our society. We have to deal with the increased inequalities we see all over the world, but also in our country. Entrepreneurship has to, something to offer and is part of the solution. And we all have to win when society, state and business operate together. 
All these things together give us strength. They are the basis for the best. Of course, we are not where we would like to be, but let us not underrate our possibilities. The objective is not to be left behind. The objective is to go forward with the best, and the time is now. Our mission in SEV is to contribute from the part of the enterprises in creating a creative and competitive business spirit, working hand in hand with society on the basis of common objectives, which is a strength of positive and beneficial change, a catalyst for prosperity and progress for all. Now, let's be more concrete. Sometimes theory and words are easy. Concrete steps are not uh, simple or one-sided because our world is complicated and it moves on with rates we cannot even follow. So, we have opted for six strands, important in each case, along which we work as a priority. The titles of these strands are Innovation, Skills for All, Green Development, Digital Transformation, Upgrading Industry, and Business and Society Coming Together. We have organized our activities along these six strands. In each of them, we think that we have something to offer. Progress in each strand brings us closer to the vision of an inclusive, long-term, sustainable development of a Greece that is innovative in all fields, a Greece where everybody has access to modern skills and knowledge, of a Greece where companies have embraced digital transformation, of a Greece that has invested in a green future, ensuring at the same time competitiveness and a smooth energy transition of a Greece with more powerful processing companies of a Greece where society and companies achieve together. And finally, of a powerful financial Greece with open horizons that creates opportunities for the society of today and tomorrow. Of course, in SEV, we don't think that we have all answers. These answers will come up gradually through debate and combining views through new initiatives initiatives through adopting best practices from everywhere. So in this spirit, we have organized today's debate around these six themes. We hope that we will shed light from three different uh, points, from the point of the state, the point of international entrepreneurship, and uh, from the point of uh, the Greek business community. So, Prime Minister, Mr. Burla, welcome to our meeting. And if you allow me, I would like to start with the Prime Minister. Could you give us uh, a few thoughts on this uh, general framework for debate, please? Thank you, Mr. Alexopoulos, indeed. And a very good day to my dear friend Albert, uh, all the way to New York, and a good evening to all attendees. This is wishing that this uh, will be the very last assembly to be hosted under COVID-19 circumstances. May I very briefly insist upon a point you raised as of your introductory remarks, a point which I believe is of major uh, weight, all the more since we're anticipating the course of this country in the post-COVID era. You did mention the notion of uh, economic and social progress, and indeed this term is quite wider, much more than the term development we usually uh, used to reflect our progress as a country. May I insist on this term, sir, because indeed uh, it is my uh, estimate that uh, right now as we stand in this country, the conditions are favorable towards making a major leap of progress ahead. This will be a leap of growth, but growth 
to uh, happen over the next years, and I'm sure uh, this will be a kind of growth that will be quite strong. More often, more soon than later, uh, it will be enough for us to cover the uh, lost um, distances for us to develop much more than uh, what the case was when we were hit by the pandemic first. This kind of growth should obey to different characteristics different, that is, from the growth we had over the last decade and the one before last, and it should also accommodate the lessons drawn uh, from the pandemic, a kind of growth that uh, might incorporate and convert into comparative advantages to major challenges of our time, namely digital uh, revolution and uh, the adjustment to a low and zero CO2 emissions economy, the need for us to deal with climate change. This should be a kind of growth uh, that much more than inclusive, to tell the truth, the term inclusive doesn't say much to me because very few are able to grasp it. Let me be more descriptive. This should be a growth capable of uh, palliating differences and minimizing discrepancies. Today, we have been able to assimilate lessons coming from other countries as well as our own experiences upon which we are building after so many years in crisis. This has taught us so well what the foundation should be upon which the new growth dynamic should be developed. Back at the time when the Hellenic uh, the, the Greeks entrusted us with the government of this uh, state. Three major objectives that should be uh, used to tackle three major challenges. First, a change of the macroeconomic policies towards a policy uh, based on less taxation without compromising fiscal uh, stability. The pandemic has changed uh, forever the context of all policies bringing up the need for the state to spend quite a lot in uh, buttressing the economy. At the same time, however, this allowed us to shift away from this obsession of the primary uh, surpluses as uh, the previous government had negotiated. And, of course, the whole debate to start in Europe on the new fiscal context a framework of stability in the post-COVID uh, era will also be assimilating lessons we drew from the way we dealt with the pandemic. The second challenge was about the structural changes to be brought about, meant to uh, improve our competitiveness and set the foundations for a more fair growth with lesser inequalities, as you described it. This is where I believe also during the uh, pandemic we and made good progress. We never uh, suspended uh, our efforts towards the reforms. And now, with the pandemic gradually subsiding, we will be accelerating, not breaking, so that whatever reforms seen as the foundations of infrastructure for a new modern perception of uh, growth will be converted in development. And the second, the third challenge being the reform of the banking sector. During the pandemic, a very deep changes uh, happened, and as a result today, the issue of the unserviced debts is less acute than it used to be some years ago, so much that we now speak about how banks will be able to once again finance the real economy than having to deal with problems coming from the past. To conclude, I believe that as we are about to uh, celebrate two years since the elections of the 7th of July, and with the eyes turned to the future, this country is very well placed to embark upon this major effort, this leap of growth ahead, which developmentally speaking will be much more reliable much more bound to have the recognition uh, outside Greece that this is a reliable government. And just as the President of the Republic said, thanks to new financing tools, both nationally and internationally, we will be able to remedy and even uh, tackle once and for all this major problem, the major uh, ill man, as we metaphorically say it, uh, this us lagging behind that up to now has been differentiating at us from the rest of Europeans. Manufacture production are in, indeed as an index moving to the right direction. Thank you. Uh, to pronomio eating, uh,
Mr. Bulas, uh, you have the privilege and the chance of uh, an international career so much that you are contemplating Greece from abroad. What is your feeling, sir, and your impressions? I'd like to thank you, Mr. Alexopoulos, for this uh, invitation. I am a very proud uh, Greek, uh, and it's a great honor to participate in an event together with Her Excellency Madame Sakelaropoulou. And I'm here with the Prime Minister, Mr. Mitsotakis. And I know that also Mr. Tsipras, the head of major opposition, was there with you. I'm sorry, though, because I cannot be close to you. But I'm always available and willing to contribute to any type of debate having to do with the future of our country, even more so in times that are full of challenges like our times. The pandemic has created a public health and social crisis in all countries. For Greece, this crisis is even more intense and difficult because it came up after a decade of a huge financial crisis. So I couldn't imagine a better slogan than invest in us to build our future. And actually, this is the title of your event. So I have never stopped firmly believing that Greece has the potential to achieve prosperity by fully utilizing the talent and, in many cases, the passion of its people to make uh, these, dynamic, these dynamics a reality. We have to support the young, the young scientists and the young at large. And this is a commitment of SEV. So I am looking forward to today's discussion, and I shall try to contribute with my my viewpoint, the way I see our country with lots of love and uh, together with uh, people that uh, have a kind of different interests as regards this country. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll come back to you, Mr. Burla. Now, let's talk about these six priorities. Let's start with innovation. First of all, we could all agree that the capacity of a country to achieve innovation has to do with better jobs, competitiveness, and higher standards of living. Uh, to come back uh, to uh, inclusiveness and inequalities, I think that the more we invest in innovation and the more we invest in skills, we'll come back to this later, the more we open the door to more people to participate in the opportunities of this new world, which means that this is the right way to reduce inequalities. In Greece, the glass of innovation could be seen as half empty. R&D expenditure is lower than in Greece, especially as regards the private sector. They are one third of the European average. Connection of research with business is fragmented in the best possible, in the best case, and we don't have new products and services that is applied innovation. Our education system does not develop skills connected with innovation enough, and the number of Greek enterprises that can be innovative today is quite low, unfortunately, I would say. However, there is a, a positive potential and uh, we can be more optimistic. For example, startups start uh, for they started from scratch about 10 or 15 years ago but now they have a small but a very lively ecosystem with 5000 workers and a capitalization of about 5 billion our objective is to help these numbers triple within the next 5 years and of course this will have a multiplying benefits in sev we have created a new sector for innovation 
innovation to assist. The platform of Innovative Greeks we started up together with Endeavor already has 840 members from all over the world and it has created networks among Greeks in Greece and outside Greece. We have also created a program called Innovation Ready for cooperation between uh, enterprises, small enterprises, large enterprises, startups, and uh, the research community. At the same time, we have foreign investment, flagship investment uh, from Microsoft or Pfizer, for example. And innovation does not only concern digital or technology sectors. We already have interesting innovation islets in traditional sectors. Greek enterprises develop new technologies, for example, for energy storage and uh, fuel cells uh, for the next generation or beverages uh, with stevia, algorithm that uh, foresees the movement of ship based uh, on uh, the freight prices, uh, cloth uh, that reduces uh, the sense of fatigue, new ways to organize hotels, and many others. So this is a question for you both. Allow me to start uh, from the Prime Minister. How can we have this new sense of innovation run through economy and society. What can we do to speed up this process? Because we all agree that this is something we wish for. I have three observations. First of all, Mr. Alexopoulos is a person which, before entering politics, has dealt with financing innovation for some 20 years. I could only express my satisfaction over the fact that uh, during the crisis there seems to have uh, been developed and growing ever since a a system of innovation that uh, responds to those characteristics, allowing it to grow further so much as to become uh, what you have just described in terms of figures when it comes to capital invested in companies uh, thanks to European funds to support uh, business uh, participations and the context, a framework of incentives on the part of the state to encourage investments, businesses uh, uh, as they start, the startups, and also a uh, first uh, stock of uh, entrepreneurs that contemplate innovation as a new mentality, a way of business action that is much more attractive today than what things used to be in the past. We have success stories of Greek startups, businesses growing, making the difference, becoming known, uh, also merging and growing. The more young people deal with entrepreneurship, the better, but nothing could ever equal the satisfaction of a new startup uh, with people behind it making successful steps ahead. A second very important remark, we need to sustain and buttress innovation R&D in new products at a level of organized corporations. This is your mission, sir. We are providing for fiscal incentives for over amortizations in expenses for R&D so as to reduce the fiscal uh, footprint of such uh, businesses. We know that for businesses to make the difference, they need to innovate. It's not a choice. It is one way ahead and uh, for one to survive uh, and uh, have a good future, a bright future for the business. Uh, this reality has now been fully grasped by uh, everyone and, and what it takes for us is now to come and uh, enrich the experience by way of horizontal or sectorial incentives, as just as we did for the pharmaceutics by having the clawback uh, set off against costs. We saw new investments happening in a very positive reaction uh, to such investments that uh, primarily uh, address innovation. A third observation. Innovation is only to be credited upon the state, not just the businesses. I believe it's very important that uh, now, as we stand, the notion of innovation, a different way whereby the state is capable of offering services and organizing public policies, is now a reality. 
in this country. And any successful example uh, is uh, capable of inoculating other sectors of exercise of public policy so that the spirit of innovation, a better way of uh, dealing with current problems, more often than not, but not all, just exclusively by the use of technology, come to be the rule so that besides smart uh, entrepreneurship, we have a smart government, a government capable of uh, promoting innovation, rewarding it and turning it into the rule and not the exception. Let me insist on one specific aspect. You say that innovation is our mission, uh, that of enterprises. Indeed, it should be mainly our mission. But when it comes to the conditions to uh, make this happen, uh, more than incentives, we need to work on aspects of skills and competencies, training, education, and the relationship between the uh, uh, community of scientists and uh, the government. Let me also pop in by saying that we're going ahead with a co-creation of an innovative uh, ecosystem of entrepreneurship. Uh, and uh, within um, kilometers from here, in a lovely uh, space, in nice premises, we'll be uh, housing the new activities developed in this country. It will be the showcase of our innovation activities. The truth be said, and we will be delving into it in due time, innovation is also about knowledge. It's about skills, but uh, businesses, just like Pfizer, must be seeing something uh, shortly before becoming so widely known in Greece, uh, thanks to its contribution to the development of the vaccine, it had been already uh, investing in, in innovation. They must have seen something. Obviously, Albert will be uh, delving further into that. Something uh, good must have been seen and discovered, something that uh, started to meet the high expectations of the multinational companies, Pfizer. With this great cue given to you, Mr. Buras, perhaps the time has come for you to speak. You have invested your life in innovation and uh, uh, technology. How do you evaluate the capacity of this country to innovate? What is it we may do better? What are the strong and what are the weak points you may see along the way? I will be sharing with you some spontaneous thoughts. I fully agree with what the Prime Minister said. I fully endorse your view that the government should be contributing by setting the context. But it is private investment that is bound to truly establish innovation as we need it. When we speak about attracting investments uh, to a country, we need to understand that uh, the context uh, is highly competitive. Almost every country on this planet, whether rich or poor, whether developed or underdeveloped, wish to attract foreign investors. And it is obvious that uh, investors have the luxury of option this is why uh, making full use of their option, they uh, embark on a more holistic way of contemplating where it is the investment should go. And there are some things which uh, are invariably taken into account, as is the infrastructure. Uh, is this country a country which uh, disposes of harbors and airports for exports to be serviced? Is there a subway system for workers to render themselves to the workplace uh, within a short time? And how about the financial status? Are there fiscal uh, facilitations and incentives? And what is the fiscal uh, status and taxation policy in this country? But when investments are in high technology, there are two more things to consider, of which the first being whether you believe you may come up with the human resources necessary for this country to be well invested in, and secondly, whether we truly believe that investment will be well accepted by the political system of the country. In our case, for example, just as the Prime Minister said, we some two years ago opted for launching ourselves in a major investment in this country, and we selected the city of Thessaloniki. I was fully aware at the time of the fact that the choice of Thessaloniki 
precisely because I uh, am of Thessalonican origin, is bound to create the impression of us perhaps uh, trying to make a gift as a company to the city or the country. Nothing could be uh, farther from uh, the truth. Uh, no gift there. Uh, Thessaloniki uh, was found worthy of our investment based on merits. And because uh, there I happened to be bound to this country, I was simply well positioned to understand earlier rather than later that there is a major potential, a huge tank of uh, specialized, highly skilled people with a passion to invest themselves in something which is uh, Uh, meant to serve a, a higher objective, as is investment in health. I also grasped the reality that there is a very different political philosophy about in Greece than what we were used to before 2009, which was hostile to investment before the crisis. Now, uh, because of this government uh, under this prime minister, do we have a new kind of mentality, and we see this happening, the mentality to foster uh, and create not just incentives, we don't just need incentives, we need to lift constraints. And this, I believe, is about to happen. It is possible. To answer your question, what I found and what I expected Uh, definitely outshone my expectations by far. Right now, as we stand, we are more than happy with the level of people we were able to recruit. And uh, at present, uh, high profile, high tech projects related to our uh, artificial intelligence brings Greece amongst those countries in which we mean to have such innovations developed through our hub. That is very interesting. We rejoice in hearing so. And this is a very good cue to the next session about skills and competencies. Skill being a very trendy term around the world because the technological developments sorry, are such that we are continuously uh, changing. Uh, the Greek human resources is potentially one of our major pros. Nevertheless, a series of indexes uh, suggest we are not fully equipped, not sufficiently so, by way of modern skills and knowledge. Today's economy and tomorrow's finance need the paradox of having 16% rate of unemployment in this country at a moment when 36% Six percent of the businesses are unable to find skilled personnel uh, has an explanation. This gap in skills, which I repeat, is not just a Greek reality. Here it is just more intense. It's amongst the more uh, difficult to uh, solve equations we have. The educational system, amply seen, uh, fails to cater to the needs of economy and businesses, at least the way we see it, Mr. Bula. Uh, we are not Pfizer, of course, so uh, humble our opinion is. We also have to admit, to be honest, that um, many business fail to sufficiently invest in uh, training, lifelong learning, the development of human resources. Simultaneously to that, uh, digitalization and uh, technological developments create new needs, very rapidly so. It is a multifaceted, multi-level problem. It is about uh, the need for practical applied knowledge, as is, for example, in the domain of uh, technical, so to, sell, uh, so to speak, professions that are, have been underestimated, then we need more and better trained uh, scientists, technicians, mathematicians, and uh, there may be very highly skilled people in these domains, but not as many as we would need. And then it is difficult for us to find good uh, software programmers. And then what about the soft skills, these horizontal capacities we need to have, creativity, a spirit of cooperation, critical thought, and communication. These latter skills that are considered to be critical for the needs of the 21st century perhaps are the most difficult of all challenges ahead, given the traditional approach 
our educational system harbors. At SEV, we work on initiatives towards apprenticeship and uh, stages uh, for the young. And as of our General Assembly, we have announced it. We launched the cooperation with the academia starting from levels lower than we expected, but there's progress. We pursue training and education programs through ELPA and ALBA uh, on a third transformation, digital transformation uh, course. And we bring schools closer to entrepreneurship uh, thanks to Junior Achievement Awards so that entrepreneurship and uh, knowledge come to be in the epicenter of uh, the country's mentality. However optimistic and positive we try to be in doing so, we cannot uh, help but thinking that, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, this goes beyond our capacities. It takes a higher uh, coalition of powers and some deep change it uh, in the way we contemplate training and education and the assimilation of models, uh, the adjustment of mentalities that are deeply rooted in uh, the Greek society. And I have a question to both of you, sirs. Gentlemen, uh, and may I start with Mr. Bula this time, which do you believe are the main skills which, to your opinion, uh, Uh, are absent in the Greek labor market and what it is we can do to cut to them swifter. I think you mentioned, uh, yes, I mentioned many types of jobs, yes, but I also wanted to say that we are very satisfied. We received about 10,000 CVs, applications. And we chose, well, now we have hired about 400 people, 350. And I think that 15% of them were Greeks that wanted to return from the US, uh, uh, the Netherlands, uh, and they were trying to find a job here. So, from what you have said, I think that the basic thing is that we should have a change in mentality and uh, models or standards. It's only obvious that uh, when for decades everybody wanted uh, to work in the public sector and then maybe in uh, a state uh, bank, instead of trying themselves to do something in the private sector, to do something that is more risky, of course, but uh, it also has greater potential. So actually, this was the reason why people were not daring enough. Now, this is the mentality that has to change. Myself, I do not have an opinion whether we have less engineers than we need in Greece or more doctors. But in Greece, in comparison to other countries, we have fewer young people that want to dare and to be innovative, that want to create a startup, that want to take the risk of trying something different. And this has to do with culture and mentality more than uh, lack of uh, university infrastructure, for example. Prime Minister, first of all, the reality you described, that is this lack of continuity between the needs of the job market as uh, expressed uh, by business uh, and uh, employers and the offer of knowledge and skills coming from workers is not a Greek phenomenon, it's an international phenomenon. Therefore, what we call upskilling or reskilling or alignment between supply and demand on the job market is definitely a European challenge. Therefore, more than two billion from the recovery fund will be channeled in this effort. It's a huge challenge. 
In the past, uh, we spent the European funds in training, but uh, the result uh, was not uh, the proper one. Therefore, we have to study a lot. We have to work in a targeted way in cooperation with the companies to identify the gaps and identify the necessary skills and knowledge for today. And we need some speedy training programs uh, with certification. For somebody who, let's say, has studied uh, science, uh, will be able to be trained um, in uh, IT, for example. However, the reform of the educational system is a huge challenge if we want to have a more uh, long-term view. Yesterday, I was in a presentation about the new school for uh, soft skills. I think that uh, we Greeks uh, can easily develop these skills. But uh, a huge challenge is also moving away from uh, the stereotypical view that you need a university degree to get a good job and have uh, an established career. A percentage, an important percentage of people standing in public uh, secondary uh, training institutes uh, come from universities. Uh, some of them see that the skills offered in university are not wanted uh, on the job market. Therefore, they try to reskill. So, something last, uh, which is uh, very important for me, and uh, I would say that uh, this touches upon uh, the concepts uh, and the views and the way we see the future of the young generation. We have uh, to re-establish the dignity of labor. And this is not uh, connected uh, with a degree. This is very important uh, when we train our new generation. The pandemic has indicated that there are professions or trades that uh, were not thought of highly in the past. We wouldn't attach importance on them, but they are very important for the way our society operates. So remuneration is not the only thing that is important. Of course, remuneration is uh, of essence, and remunerations are going to become higher in a developing economy, and this asymmetry between supply and demand will uh, lead to higher remuneration. In some sectors, yes, no, yes, but it's not only highly skilled sectors. And some employers say, I cannot find. You can say, pay more, and you shall find. So things are going to be corrected by the market itself. But. We need to change uh, the models. There are many trades uh, that do not call for a university degree. They take uh, other types of education, but they can bring enough money, and it's also the dignity, the dignity of working, and we cannot see uh, people studying technical skills are uh, not uh, so well uh, educated. This is uh, the wrong, uh, the wrong standard. This is why we decided to change things. Sometimes uh, we say that uh, we give them the opportunity to enter university, even if their grades are not high enough, and then they will finish. They will get a degree, and they will find out that there was a whole process that was not satisfactory for them. But at the same time, uh, this uh, process gave them uh, no benefit, uh, no weapon to deal uh, with the challenges of the job market. And then we have uh, continuous training and continuous reskilling. This will be the rule and not the exemption. Okay, so Mr. Burla uh, studied uh, veterinary medicine, and you started in the private sector before being involved in politics. So actually, I fully accept uh, the rationale that it's not an issue of a university degree, it's an issue 
of uh, mentality, knowledge and way of thinking. And we keep saying that especially the young generation will experience more than one career. So skills are becoming necessary. But, you know, we don't have enough time, so allow me to go on with uh, the next uh, uh, strand, uh, the next module. Green transition and green development. I will start by saying that uh, it's clear that SEV fully supports the ambition of the European Union to become the first uh, uh, climate neutral continent till 2050. This is the morally right thing to do, but If this becomes a reality, we will be able to live in a Europe combining environmental viability and financial prosperity. Now, what do we have to do to combine both successfully now? It is necessary for the interventions having to do with the basic objective of climate change to be complemented with a targeted energy policy ensuring energy safety and adequacy and competitive cost of energy for all, and also an industrial policy ensuring that the European and therefore the Greek production will be able to compete on the market during this transition. We think that Greece and Greek production can come out more powerful after this European uh, Green Deal, but uh, we should also identify the challenges. It's the geographical position of Greece as regards the Sibin mechanism, because in many neighboring countries there are no such restrictions and cost as regards uh, carbon emissions. For example, Turkey, our neighboring country, so therefore we have this risk of uh, the so called uh, uh, carbon leakage, which means that production could move out of Greece and out of the EU, which will cost uh, jobs, investment uh, and exports, and it will also have a negative environmental impact. At the same time, in energy policy, we could uh, reap the benefit from the natural advantages of Greece in order to speed up transition to renewable energy sources. We have excellent conditions and uh, we are moving in the right way, which is not always the easy way. There is going to be enough funding from the recovery fund. However, transition will not be without cost. Energy co- the energy cost uh, in the years to come should not become too high. Greek uh, processing business are doing fine. Uh, we have all reduced uh, CO2 emissions by 29% uh, in the period 1990-2018. Uh, the relevant uh, figure was 22 in the EU. But as regards man- uh, waste management and cyclical economy, we are still lagging behind. We have a way to go. Now, a central question to you, Prime Minister. How can we best combine uh, these things, dealing with climate change, uh, energy transition, and industrial policy in order to achieve financial uh, development and protection of the environment? There is no easy answer to your question, but I believe that this question is at the core of uh, the debates uh, on the European level as to the implementation of the commitments of the EU. Uh, 2030, this reduction of 55% of emissions. And of course, uh, in 2050, we want to become the first uh, climate neutral uh, continent. Of course, we Greece uh, agrees with these uh, uh, objectives. Now, energy has to be produced uh, Uh, everything has to do with um, the way we produce energy, the way we heat our houses, uh, uh, our buildings, and also agricultural production. Everything has to be taken into consideration. We are working with experts in the field 
And we are going to find the best possible ways to reach these objectives with the least cost possible for the Greek economy, especially as regards the issue of prices, of energy prices. De facto, we have uh, conflicting trends. You see, for example, what happened recently with the increases in energy prices, a combination of different trends, an increase in natural gas prices, very hot temperatures, which means more demand for energy. Therefore, this uh, challenge will definitely be combined with innovation and uh, the reduction of the cost of energy production from RES. But, of course, uh, this will also depend on uh, the connection of the markets, uh, interconnection of the markets. We have to ensure that uh, this transition will happen without an increase in energy costs, not uh, just for processing companies, but also for uh, households and vulnerable households, because uh, some of the incentives we might want to give to houses, to households, to reduce their energy bills because we want our homes to be more environmentally friendly. But these incentives are not incentives for the most vulnerable citizens. So it's absolutely necessary to ensure that this transition, okay, in this transition, the industry should remain competitive and work with competitive energy prices. But on the other hand, the vulnerable households uh, shouldn't run the risk of energy poverty. And of course, we will need a mechanism of adjustment. You could call it uh, whatever you like. Uh, we could give it a technical name. But we need to have a prote protection. Actually, this is what we want to do, to protect uh, ourselves uh, uh, from uh, uh, competition coming from countries that do not have high environmental standards and uh, CO2 uh, production uh, is uh, not uh, that expensive uh, and we are waiting for this uh, 50, 55 on this uh, target. This has to do with uh, the sectors covered uh, by the emission rights system and the other activities that are not covered by it. And in this case, uh, we need certain guidelines on the European on European level to achieve this goal. If I may uh, beg to differ on one point, we need equal level play field rather than several terms. We need a rainy statement, not a protection of European industry. Well, we might definitely say protect from uh, unlawful competition. I believe we are saying one of the same thing. Mr. Burla, this might go beyond your scope of expertise. I wonder whether you have some thoughts to share with us based on how uh, science reacted to coronavirus and uh, how uh, all of a sudden, at the right time, science may provide solutions much swifter than one expected. I wonder whether there are lessons to be drawn from what you dealt with uh, during the pandemic, uh, also when it comes to climatic change. I'm more than certain things of this are around. Besides what we face, there are lessons to be drawn from all times in history. Back in 1961, for instance, um, uh, John Kennedy, president of the U.S. at the time, set a flagship goal uh, compared to what we are pursuing uh, climate change-wise. He said, 10 years from now, we will place a and will send a man to the moon and all the way back safely. Obviously, the fact by itself uh, a man traveled to the moon did not offer much to humanity, but the 60s has been the critical decade establishing the hegemony of the U.S., technologically speaking, because in the commitment to pursue this goal, the Americans uh, set up in uh, a variety of sectors from health and fuel to navigation, communications, uh, new technologies sprang up that were necessary for this major leap to be taken ahead. In that sense, 
I see the glass to be half full and not half empty. There can be no doubt as to the fact that there will be changes, and changes might be painful to some. And uh, one has to adjust fatally. But I have the impression that the opportunity to be created, if we are going down this path, will much more than compensate, they will outshine whatever problems they may have, overwhelmingly so in today's economy. Yes, easy it will be not, by far. But apart from being the right thing to do, ethically speaking, I also believe that this is bound to become a major lever to growth by way of new technologies and by definition of new economic activities. Right. Well, here we are in the fourth uh, module, Digital Revolution, and there, since we are speaking about glasses, about being half full or half empty, depends on how you see it. In Greece, we uh, shifted from awareness to activation, and it is interesting to establish that uh, the various uh, seminars and webinars hosted by SEV are very popular amongst our uh, business members. During the pandemic, we took major steps ahead when it comes to the digitalization of uh, uh, government services to citizens. The vaccination uh, campaign is one such very typical example, quite telling as to the way the government may liaise with the private sector. This is a country where grudging is a national sport, and then we all have only praise to express to the government for this. It is necessary to now uh, convert this momentum to something very inspiring and go even further ahead, faster. Indexes suggest we are lagging way behind still. Others are overpassing us, they are doubling us. And now this digital deficit is a Achilles heel uh, for our businesses. Many people understand it, but um, less than half have any plan to make this happen. Very telling also the fact that only 3% of businesses in Greece today invest in artificial intelligence as opposed to 45% in other advanced countries. The swiftness of adjustment to uh, this revolution will be further buttressed through the uh, recovery fund, and it is now about time this money uh, makes something good to happen. Besides investing in infrastructure and uh, tools, it is an overall uh, attempt that requires a holistic approach in all senses, and from a digital adjustment to full innovation of all systems of the organization of labor. It is obvious, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, that uh, going back to the previous uh, suggestion, that companies are mostly responsible for the uh, digital transformation of their activities. But what are we to do to help them go there even faster under the pressure of the conjuncture, the Prime Minister. You know that there are funds available under the recovery fund uh, in that sense, and I have to say that also uh, during the pandemic we were quick to realize that even small businesses adjusted quite swiftly to the new digital realities and that in a very swift and efficient way, thereby realizing that that was also uh, a single way ahead. Uh, with no alternatives in order to face this crisis successfully. But the major challenge uh, is about digitalizing services and other facilitations to other citizens. And there, just as the case is with all complex projects, including vaccination, it takes good preparation and a very successful implementation project uh, thanks to the right people at the right place. And indeed, I believe it has been widely accepted. We have achieved quite a lot in that sense. This is, amongst other, due to the fact that before coming to this uh, government, two years before that, we had started working on this dimension, on this effort. And very quickly did we create a horizontal ministry that acquired the property of databases and ownership of all the processes in order to relentlessly, heedlessly implement all these means, and we are now reapping the results. The momentum is there. We have no intention of losing it. A series of projects have integrated. 
themselves in this context besides uh, the digitalization of the government in the wider sense of the term, we're catering to all needs and to all aspects. And uh, of course, beneficiaries will also be the national uh, activity of rendering of services. They will benefit from this effort. The recovery fund is there to buttress it, and we have no intention of uh, letting this opportunity go uh, unused, unutilized. The foundations have been cast. We know what the challenges are. We know what are the strong points, what the weaknesses are there that are looming. We know where it is we're lagging behind and where it is we are going very much ahead of others. We need to enhance the trust of citizens that we are in a position to carry out successfully such very complex missions. The vaccination campaign has been such an example because we fully digitalized the whole process when it comes to infrastructure and this is something that worked quite well. We liaised very successfully with the private sector. We utilized the know-how available uh, with the private sector coming from uh, a variety of sectors had the, having nothing to do uh, in principle to uh, what uh, a uh, health campaign might be expected to uh, have. You know, delivering uh, vaccines within five days, uh, definitely it was a wise thing to address oneself to dairy product distributors to, see, to become inspired from the way they are operating. Now we know how to do it. We have built a trust. We need it. And I'm more than certain we will be able to utilize these very interesting uh, funds under the recovery funds, the resources that are necessary for this to happen. Mr. Alexopoulos, I retain the thought that a very successful liaison between the private and public sector can only yield positive results. Mr. Bula, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the centers you created in Salonica is digital. And uh, rather than being uh, limiting ourselves in generics, um, uh, please elaborate on the digital skills. Do you have a way of assessing Greece and its position vis-a-vis -vis other countries you are contemplating around the world? The answer by Mr. Bula. I don't have such much data to share with, but I am building on the experience uh, coming from my family, people of mine who had the vaccine in Greece. Uh, my family uh, had the job in the U.S. I may assure you the way things fared in Greece, which was definitely much better, not just in the way the vaccination campaign was organized, but also, just as the Prime Minister said, in the way you digitalize the whole process. Even in America, only yesterday was I able to download proof of vaccination uh, in my uh, cellular phone, and this is US, after all. Now, as to what the uh, digital revolution may bring about in biology, I have high hopes. I may assure you that we are uh, confronted with a scientific renaissance uh, during this uh, decade. And the most important feature of this revolution consists in that biology and digital technology for the very first time conflicting. And through this conflict, uh, new perspectives are opened up, unprecedented ones, the biology was capable of uh, discovering the secret of life by creating the uh, human gene, whereas uh, the digital technology was capable of uh, coming up with uh, computing power needed for us to grasp how exactly life came to happen, how living organisms behave in order to find solutions to their problems. Amongst the first things I did when I joined Pfizer was, a couple of years ago, back in 2019, was to uh, considerably boost our investment in digital applications and R&D in general. And coming to Salonika now, what we are uh, about to create is a hub destined to deal with uh, practically all digital activities a multinational such as ours needs, but uh, a major part of this will be focusing on biological research through technology, through digital technology. And 
Right now, as we stand, AI is the one that generates more perspectives for the discovery of new uh, medicine. And right now, at Pfizer, we have automated 75% of all operations or processes, and between now and the end of this year, I believe we will have reached 95% which uh, results in us having time for R&D much more than on administration that was quite problematic in the past. One last point, if I may. I fully endorse the Prime Minister's view, namely that the major bet will be for the uh, public sector to be digitalized. This is meant to play a major part in the digitalization of the country as a whole. This is something we businesses need, and so do investors. We need a public sector that is productive and technologically actual. Mr. Alexopoulos, and uh, this is a very good cue further ahead for us to enter into a discussion of industry and the modern industrial policy. The fact that uh, industries and uh, the processing and production are a multiplier in economy uh, because it contributes in most of the exports of this country, paying 30% higher wages than the average, I believe are things everyone more or less acknowledges. The fact that uh, this sector was so resilient in times of epidemic and has been recovering above the 2019 levels with more positive trends towards extrovertness and uh, growth, according to the Pisaridis report, I believe also has been registered. Uh, what I believe is uh, a, a distance between what is really happening and what the obsolete models are, the stereotypes that most Greeks have been retaining is how uh, it operates and what it takes for the industry to be successful in the worldwide arena. The added value comes less and less nowadays from major investments in fixed assets or in menial work. It is more and more so coming from digitalization and the initiative similar to Pfizer's. Uh, AI, innovation, skills, knowledge, maximization and investment in clusters and in supply chains. Consequently, for us to attain the goal upon which we have agreed, which is boost the participation of processing in the GDP by 16% in the next few years with all positive impacts this entails, uh, for this to happen, besides lifting the ancelosis that inhibit our development, it's necessary to condition, but not the only one. We need to have a comprehensive strategy such as to combine horizontal interventions such such as uh, fiscal incentives and uh, credit uh, with uh, well-targeted uh, reinforcement uh, policies in clusters and extroverted sectors in which Greece has an advantage. We at SEV have been uh, enhancing our industry council in order to provide well-documented and specific proposals. Mr. Prime Minister, we have publicly agreed on the goal of 15%, so the PCRI this financial report itself acknowledges the importance of industrial maximization, but because of uh, uh, the uh, targets we're pursuing, we need further to see how to go faster to the, toward the creation of productive ecosystems and alliances amongst small and bigger businesses, among Greek businesses and foreign businesses, to constructively liaise in order to yield this multiplier advantage we uh, need for industries to be successful nowadays. The answer, you did mention horizontal policies that are critical uh, to the overall economic activity, primarily so for industry, the reduction of taxes. I have to stress now that Greece uh, has come to be quite reliable when it deals with uh, foreign uh, powers uh, to bring down 
uh, the uh, fiscal uh, rate, taxation rate for business at 22%. But besides taxing um, benefits, we need to have further incentives for our industry to become competitive and be capable of uh, paying good uh, wages. Consequently, the whole discussion about uh, bringing down uh, the employer's social security contribution and investment in uh, training and the, ba the abolition permanently of the solidarity um, ad uh, extraordinary tax are amongst the uh, fiscal incentives meant to encourage investment. And it is quite interesting in uh, investment intensive sectors as is industry. You did mention licensing and of course we, you know, have taken very interesting steps in that sense. And there is much more to happen, of course, uh, towards simplifying uh, the licensing process. Uh, having said that, other aspects relevant to, for example, energy cost, as many industries uh, build on energy as a critical ingredient of cost of production, but also the possibility to encourage innovation by way of specific targeted incentives for industry to be capable of adjusting to the uh, new uh, requirements. You have described yourself what the challenges the modern industries have to face. It is time for industry to adjust to challenges and the opportunities triggered by climatic change. And to mention your field of expertise, there are companies, especially in Scandinavia, that are starting to uh, produce uh, concrete uh, by applying uh, non-CO2 emissive uh, uh, methods and techniques. We may think of other uh, ways for CO2 to, put, to be put to service uh, by way of uh, storing it and making good use of it. So, to uh, cut a long story short, we may have more things to do, especially in fields that have to do with combined uh, transport, a domain where uh, good strategies are in order for the country's uh, position to be utilized and for infrastructures to be bettered. Whether we speak about uh, seaports or railway connections, there is now a comprehensive package of contracts we will be bringing uh, on the table that are of vital importance for the combined transport challenge for the government to be able to set up the infrastructure uh, network the industry needs, both for the present and for the future, what we refer to as connectivity. And this is where we have very important resources to build on, be it optic fibers or uh, networks, smart networks for the future. We are amongst the first countries that have going, been going down the path of uh, 5G networks. All these, uh, in a generic way, set the context for an industrial policy uh, conditioned by well-targeted interventions per sector. And again, we remain open for more discussions with you on the matter. Last but not least, labor law and legislation has its own special role to play. The new uh, draft law uh, in the domain of labor that has been just uh, uh, promulgated is such an example. Uh, there is an approach adjusted to the challenges of our times flexibly and by way of ensuring a consultation between the employer and the worker, uh, bestowing more safety and security upon the worker uh, with uh, conditions adjusted to today's realities. Paternity leave, which was something we had to deal with and we inherited from the past, or an equal treatment uh, between a middle worker or any employee uh, if uh, severance uh, pay is in order. Well, perhaps we should be shifting away from this discussion for now, and I would like to ask Mr. Bourla whether he himself believes in uh, the concept of clusters. There are in Greece some uh, potential clusters around uh, some uh, physical advantages about metals, the agroalimentary, some minerals and pharmaceutics. There are such things, or is it just a folly to believe there can be technology clusters happening in Greece or in the domain of pharmaceutics? 
Not at all, uh, says Mr. Bull. I believe it's quite achievable, and if we insist, we take some perseverance and innovation, but it is feasible. I believe the same question was put through by the uh, Prime Minister and the leadership of the Minister of Health, and the same uh, was the case uh, by previous governments. The Prime Minister set up a panel of uh, excelling Greeks, Greeks that uh, really excel in the international for a world of pharmaceutics, and there has been a um, web a meeting amongst them, uh, great names in this domain, who spoke about what Greece should do to attract R&D. Right now, as we speak, in Europe, some 40 billion dollars are spent on uh, the r- research in the field of uh, pharmaceutics and medicinal products. 50 million uh, US dollars concern Greece. Based on the population, uh, you should have a share of 1 billion. By 50 million, we're lagging behind by several millions. And indeed, it's a field that might develop and grow considerably. And this could generate employment, jobs, and scientific uh, discoveries that would be further promoting the scientific ecosystem of this country. Uh, I believe uh, Mr. Alexopoulos knows what I'm talking about. The Prime Minister knows what it takes for these innovations to be advanced for the domain, this field to be developed. Mr. Alexopoulos, this is a very good cue to the last session for today's event, tonight's event, which allow, will allow everybody to enjoy their dinner. Uh, it is about the relationship between businesses and society. As of last year's General Assembly, on these very premises, we spoke about the need to build a new relationship of trust between businesses and uh, the society. We had raised the issue of benefits to be expected for all when businesses and uh, society come closer together. The fact that, uh, uh, to a large extent, the Greek society shifts away from businesses and see them as an enemy, this mistrust up to a certain extent might be explained when it comes to businesses that are struggling within an introverted and overregulated economy where uh, the honest people are rarely awarded for their merits and uh, the consistent ones are sanctioned for being so, which inspires uh, the uh, question by many of the importance of contributing to the common good. With RMB, we went further into these issues, so there are good news and bad news. Good news. First, the notion of entrepreneurship is seen much more in a much more positive uh, spirit than a few years ago. It has been widely accepted that entrepreneurship is part of the solution. It's the necessary condition for the development of the country. It develops both development and jobs. Now, we also have some negative stereotypical thinking. Entrepreneurship is regarded as something else, something different to companies, industry, or, God forbid, entrepreneur. There are still suspicions against companies, especially the Greek companies, that uh, are thought of being mechanisms for making profits and exploiting people. Whereas in Germany or the US, citizens speak for their companies, our companies, proudly. Uh, no Greeks, uh, uh, Greeks will never say our companies, meaning the Greek companies. So, this uh, idea of society and uh, companies coming closer depends on us. We have to invest in meritocracy, training of our people, innovation, sustainable development, proper governance. We need a critical mass of uh, business uh, that accept this. And this is the case. In SEV, we want to lead by example and help these companies become more. We want to build trust in a transparent environment and uh, win the proud 
the win the fact that uh, people could feel proud for our companies. Now, Prime Minister, what are the reforms, the steps uh, the state could take in order to help us achieve this idea, the idea of our companies for the benefit of us also? Of course, we have to take the first step, not the state. Maybe Mr. Papalexopoulos and some of the older members of SEV remember that in my first speech, when I was first elected as head of the major opposition party back then, I talked about a new deal between companies and people, recognizing the responsibility of companies vis-a-vis -vis society and not just vis-a-vis -vis their shareholders. And now I think that many of these ideas have become part of your approach about entrepreneurship, today and uh, what uh, is called in English stakeholder capitalism. But anyway, more responsibility towards society. Okay, of course, uh, all business activities are there to produce profit, but that's not enough. We have to change this stereotype, and we all have to change. First, it's clear that uh, business activities that created these stereotypes have to be condemned and punished first by the state and become isolated in the business world. In uh, the recent uh, law, we insisted uh, on the digital card for working hours in order to avoid the phenomenon. Maybe this is not a phenomenon for large companies, but it is there for smaller companies. You know, we do have this phenomenon of uh, uh, people not getting the reward for works they actually worked. And nobody can accept this. So I believe that technology is a tool of transparency for us all. And of course, there are some wider objectives, corporate social responsibility, for example. This should be a concern for companies that also participate in the prosperity of our country at large. And it's not enough just to think that this is just an obligation they have, an obligation the boards ask for or the shareholders ask for. It's something you really have to believe in, and sometimes it has to be accompanied with innovative ideas dealing with the challenges of our times. I would like to make some comments on this. Indeed, yes, there were some businesses that were quick to come with us in our initiative to reward young people that wanted to have the job giving, by giving them 150 euro. And some companies offered them some products as a gift for vaccination. So they wanted to be part of this great effort to convince as many citizens as possible to get the job. And in this effort, it's a good idea to have this type of incentives, and especially if the burden is shared between the state budget and companies, we will be more effective in this target. Finally, I think that the new entrepreneurship built in the innovation ecosystem has different rules of participation, participation of the workers in the success of the company. And I think that uh, traditional companies have many things to show us, especially as regards participation in uh, the uh, in giving some shares to workers, 
because in this way workers uh, actually become a part of the company when they have shares of the company. So I think uh, that uh, even traditional companies have to learn from uh, more innovative and uh, young uh, companies as regards uh, labor relations and the balance uh, between uh, work and personal life, ways to utilize uh, technology for remote uh, work. This is also a reality which is here to stay, and this uh, might help in this balance between work and life, uh, personal life. And I think uh, that this uh, will further improve uh, the image of entrepreneurship in our country. Businesses uh, produce uh, wealth, and if they realize that this is their main uh, objective, but not the only objective, they will change their image, because still we have the old image in the Greek society. Sometimes it is justified. Now, we are talking about inclusive development or stakeholder capitalism. Uh, reducing inequalities. This is the spirit of our age, and we all want to move in this direction. Mr. Burla, your sector is heavily based on the need of building trust between your sector and consumers and your sector and society, especially as regards health issues. Do you have anything wise to tell us, especially as regards Greece? No, nothing wise to say. But, you know, in our case, the products of our industry are used uh, on the bodies of the people. So this notion of trust between the one that signs the product and the one that takes the product in is of paramount importance. I also want to say that uh, uh, the new trends uh, you described move very fast now, at a very high speed. In 2019, the worst uh, federation, uh, or the most powerful association of the US has signed a declaration changing the notion or changing its uh, regime, saying that this association is there not just for the benefit of the shareholders, this was the previous regime, now they say that they exist for serving a wider field of stakeholders. Indeed, I was one of the signatories of this founding declaration. Right now, the companies that cannot present data and figures to their investors to convince them that they actually contribute to the prosperity of society at large find it hard to attract the necessary investment. Investors more and more show the trend to check not just profitability of the company, but also its contribution to society. This is very important, and I think that the companies that will not be able to adjust in the new environment will find uh, themselves in very difficult places in the next decades. I think uh, that uh, we have uh, to come to the end of this event. I will give you both uh, the opportunity for some conclusions. So, I would like first uh, to thank uh, our speakers for their participation in the debate and the Prime Minister. It has been a difficult day, but still he managed to come. And I would like to thank Mr. Burla, who from the other side of the ocean tried to find out uh, how we think uh, here in Greece and give us a different viewpoint. Prime Minister, would you like to say a couple of words? Just uh, a phrase uh, addressing you. Now I can say that it's the right time to invest in Greece, and I'm sure about it. The prospects uh, for the Greek economy 
seem very positive, but the framework of investment has to be governed by the parameters mentioned here today. The investment gap is to be covered not just by public investment, it will be covered mainly by, with private investment, and I'm firmly convinced that we now have the necessary conditions in this country to take this great leap forward, to leave uh, a very painful decade behind, and also to completely change the way our country is placed on the international financial map. The time is now, and I know that you are going to meet the challenge of our times. Thank you. Mr. Burla, parting thoughts? The country has come out of a very difficult decade indeed, but this is also an opportunity. And since the Greeks said that those in need find good ways. So difficulties have created new mentalities and uh, we could uh, build on it. Finally, I would like to say it's uh, something for the Greek uh, business people. I think that they will have to take more initiatives themselves. I think that all your requests and demands to the government are only logical, but I have the impression that you pay too much attention to what the government does. We have to pay attention to what we are supposed to do in order to be effective. And in this sense, mentality has changed, of course, and we have been through these difficult times. So this is a golden opportunity for Greece in the future, and we have to make use of it. We in SEV believe that uh, the next years will be years of real financial, economic, and social progress. We believe in this, we will invest in this, and we will try to create a better business world for our country to move on. Thank you very much.